This is my HP PhotoSmart C6380 all-in-one printer. And uh, I bought this printer back in 2009, I think. And right after I got my first MacBook Pro, the one that predeceased that one. Which, by the way, is still going strong. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so this printer here, it, um, it has served me very well for about um, three years, give or take. Maybe, actually, I think it's more like four years. Anyway, that said, it's time to go. It's, uh, it's done. It still works beautifully. Um, however, it, it drinks ink like um, a drunken sailor. It goes through so much freaking ink, it's not even funny. I wonder if I have any cartridges left for it. I thought I had like one or two sitting around. Well, nevertheless, it's history. I am so tired of buying ink for this printer. Every time I turn it on, it seems it needs an ink cartridge. I've had, um, a variety of printers over the years as my primary printers. Um, my very first inkjet was an Epson Stylus Color 440. It took me, oh god, three months to save up for that printer when I was babysitting my sister. That was my only job. That's all I had time for. Ten dollars a week, baby. Um, <laughs> so ten dollars a week. And it took me, um, you think I could figure that out in my head? Let's see, 10 weeks, oh, 14 weeks, yeah, 14 weeks to save up for that printer. And yeah, I liked it for the most part, but it was an otherwise sore disappointment. Um, so ever since then, I've been buying HP products. Well, until I bought my iMac in 2008, I bought myself a Canon, my very first Canon, and my last. Um, after three months, that printer started leaking ink like onto the desk, making mess, um, total mess out of my desk. Anywho, in this video, we're going to discuss the replacement for this printer, which is right there. But before we get into that, this, because it isn't dead, I'm going to give it to a friend of mine who actually has a similar model. Um, and she just needs a new printer, so it's pretty much win-win. Um, and because she owns a business refilling ink cartridges, there you go. Um, I, uh, I was going to buy some cartridges from her, but the savings weren't worth it to me. It was like $3 less for the refilled cartridges than it was for the OEMs. Yeah. No thanks. So let's pull this baby away. Um, this is a very nice printer. It had a color screen and uh, scan and print over the network. It was a it was a very well rounded little machine, and I and I um, I will miss it. Um, still in very good condition. Low page count. Probably I probably have like maybe a hundred. Uh, no, maybe about five hundred pages at the most. I don't buy a lot of paper. Um, it's a four cartridge model. Photo, uh, photo gray, magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. It's still very clean. Um, you know, no complaints. I mean, it, it does a damn fine job printing. But one of the reasons I'm going away from HP is I want to try something different. I want to go back to Epson. Um, HP ink as beautiful as it looks on paper, as soon as you touch it, no matter how long it's been since it was printed, it'll smudge. Not very fun. So you can't print photographs. I mean, even though it's a photo printer, it sucks because you print a photo, you hand it to a friend, he touches it, and guess what happens? It smears. Because HP cannot make waterproof ink. I don't know why. And here comes Epson. Epson! is a printer manufacturer that I have avoided for years because everyone I've ever had has had an issue with clogging heads. 
One of the reasons I stuck with HP for so many years is because their printers had replaceable heads, or the heads were part of the cartridge. Not Epson. Well, you know what? It's been many years since I've owned an Epson. Actually, I bought an all-in-one about five years ago. No, a little more than that. And uh, it clogged pretty much after two weeks. So I bought my first HP laser. The first new one. <laughs> but I still have my laser printer. This is still a brand new printer. It's a year old now. Um, but I have enough toner to last about six lifetimes. Um, but that's another story for another day. So let's take this printer out of here and uh, put the new one in. Okay, so the Epson I chose was the Epson Expression Premium XP600. Wow, that's a mouthful, but here it is. Um, this is an, a compact all-in-one. Um, I won't be needing the scanner function, but hey, it's nice to have it. Um, I was looking for a dedicated photo printer, um, but they don't really make those anymore. <laughs> so. And that market's pretty much done. Seriously, try finding a compact photo printer these days, or even a full-size one. They don't exist. So, it's wrapped in enough plastic to, I don't know, but to follow that up with. But anyway, uh, let's take the plastic off. One of the reasons they do this is because a lot of their new products feature glossy finishes. And if you know anything about glossy plastic, is that if you touch it, it scratches. Like the first time you touch it. It's got this uh, shelf sticker. We'll take that off. Oh, good. They, re they use removable adhesive. Kudos to them for that. Okay, ah, and you got the obligatory Kapton tape. By the way, if you didn't know this, this blue tape that's on everything is called Kapton tape. It's good stuff. And this opens up to remove any jams. This is the built-in duplexing unit. Yeah, it has a duplexer built in. HP charges extra for those, it seems. So, oh. got uh, underneath here we have a belly pan of some kind. Not sure if that's removable or not. Oh, you know what? That's the um, maybe that's the paper tray. Uh, this is the first steps and I've seen consumer model anyway with a bottom feeding paper tray. Uh, Epson is primarily known for top loaders which have their own downfalls. Um, mainly that the top loading mechanisms are prone to uh, loading up with dust, which um, reduces the effectiveness of the pickup rollers. Well, this printer is uh, pretty sleek looking. It almost looks like an appliance, which is okay by me. Here's the uh, paper tray. This is possibly the world's smallest capacity paper tray. Um, <laughs> doesn't have the ability to hold much of anything at all. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, I'll set it to letter size, obviously. You know, I wonder how long it'll be before the term letter sized will be completely obliterated because let's face it nobody writes letters anymore so the younger generation probably doesn't even know what a letter is you know on that subject which is totally off topic but i don't care it's my show um the last time i ever wrote a letter to anybody was in 2003 and that was because I was in basic training in Lackland Air Force Base, and uh, I had to write to my parents somehow. That was the only method we were allowed. 
you get to write a letter on Air Force stationery. It was a good time. So anyway, um, this is the control panel. I think it's motorized, to be honest. I Maybe not. Something... I don't know. I should read the, the instructions, if there are any. So let's turn it on. Or not. There we go. English. Do not open the scanner unit. It's doing a calibration, I know that. Because I used to own a cannon, and that's what cannons do. I wonder if that does kind of open and close on its own. There's no ink in it yet. Install ink cartridges. Alright, that's easy. Pop this open. And there you go. So here's, here's the head assembly. It's a six cartridge unit. No, it's four, but the two of them, okay, two of them are for black. Um, they use these fine mesh screens to protect the uh, nozzles from contamination. Obviously, this printer has been tested. There's a little bit of ink in that pad. And there's a pumping unit that pumps the ink out of this unit assembly here into a uh, containment vessel or a sponge within the printer. This is actually... Um, uh, a slight evolution of design for Epson. Much cheaper materials, but pretty clean layout. I like it. it still uses that uh, sensor wheel that they've always used. I used to repair Epson printers because I was the only one in my neighborhood who knew how to do it. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I've actually had success bringing old Epson printers back to life. Um, by running ammonia through the... I actually would take old cartridges, fill them with ammonia after cleaning out the sponges, and I would use them as cleaning cartridges that work pretty well. But you can actually buy them now, just like that. Pretty cool. The Epson cleaning kits. They ship from Hong Kong, of all places. And no, Epson does not sell them. Alright, so I'm going to cut these little bags open. Make it easier for me to put these cartridges in. Now, of course, they're starter cartridges. They'll probably last like half a ream, but if that, if I'm lucky. But such is life. That's just how it is. You want to own a printer, you got to pay the price. And it's a lot of money. It adds up quick. So these are not the cartridges that I'm used to seeing from Epson. Um, they're a little bit lower profile. I'll show you in a second when I get them open. Yeah, it is a five cartridge printer. Photo black, black, yellow, magenta, cyan. All right. Just like my HP was. Hopefully this one is a little more conserving. Black, noir. 273i. That's the cartridge. And it's got this tab on the bottom. You just pull that off. Which reveals the ink sponges. And we're going to just pop that in there. Push there, lock it in. I can do that for all the others. Never remove these caps until you're actually ready to put them in because that could be a bad thing. You'll be like, oh, why did I do that? I know, I wasn't thinking. Alright. Uh, these do have ID chips. That was one of my other concerns. I wasn't sure if Epson used them or not. And yes, they do. That way, and you know the only reason they do that is so that you can 
not refill the cartridges. Because if you try to, you're not going to have any luck. You're going to be like, oh crap, I can't refill my cartridges. And that's what's going to happen. I tell you, that's, that's, that's what they do. Jerks. All right. And that is why it's so hard to refill your cartridges now. Bing. All right, so we're all in. And... This is where it wastes half the ink that uh, you just installed. It's not fun. Initialization takes seven minutes. God, you could take an, a dot matrix printer, right? Brand new in the box. Pull it out of the box, set it up, and under three minutes you can have the thing printing off reports. It's just, things aren't like they used to be. One of the things I'm, I'm wondering about is the, the output tray actually pulls out. It's, a, it's on a motorized track. And I want to see... They, they pretty much copied the HP Envy when they did that. And um, I just want to see how that works, if it does. Well, that was... Uh, <laughs> that took a while. Um, Alright, so the first thing I want to do... I just want to see if it would... No, it doesn't. Huh. When you turn it on, it doesn't open up either. Guess not. Okay. I know that I've seen some that were actually motorized. If you um, touch them a certain way, or there'd be like a hidden lever or something. Anyway, I guess not. All right. Well, um, I tell you what, I'll do. I'm going to um, I'm going to try to print something to it. I need to set that up. So let's go to Wi-Fi setup. Oh, this isn't a touch screen. Why not? Alright. Wi-Fi setup wizard. And my network is pretty well open. I just have to put in my magic word. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's both of them. Bishop home. I'm going to put in my secret word. And once it's on the network, it should be visible with bonjour. Right. Failed. Why would it fail? Let's try a different um damn. Okay, we're good. You know it really drives me nuts. If this printer supported Ethernet, I could have plugged it into the wireless access point next to it. But hey, you know, whatever. Um, got it working. It's all good and happy. Uh, so let's install the software and see what happens. So while I'm waiting for the Epson app to install, let's take a look at the sheet feeders and the output tray. Um, there are... It really doesn't feel safe, um, but okay. Uh, here is the upper cassette for basically photos. And that just slides right in there, I think. Yeah. And then it draws it in as needed. Notice something missing. Oh wait, no, it will take envelopes, I think. I was going to say, it's like it doesn't have an envelope print. Uh, yeah, maybe it does. 
But back in the old days, um, envelope slots were basically the standard. Um, but so I believe what happens is when the output tray comes out, it opens this, but I don't see any provisions for closing it. Eh. It just sounds weak, but okay. All right, let's see what it does. All right. Um, I see. Yeah, let's see here. Start printer setup. Wireless connection. It's on my wireless network. Add printer. Epson. There it is. I've already installed the driver on the machine, which was pretty uneventful. Didn't I just do this? Oh, I'm using AirPrint. Continue. Oh, that's already done. Print test page. Uh, does it tell me to? Yeah, it doesn't tell me to open the output tray, so let's go for it. Um, just print that. Open the output tray manually. Well, that sucks. kind of sucks actually I don't like that I have to so in other words I can't be downstairs oh I've got to print something and then print and then expect it to happen I have to manually print I don't like that it seems like kind of counterproductive all right that was fast and wow is that razor sharp and this is cheap printer paper too I think I'm going to try a photograph. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to do. I have to do my dishes, but that's not really what I'm here for. Um, see how waterproof this Epson ink really is. This is a demonstration that I used to do to my customers when I was working at an electronics retailer to show just how waterproof Epson ink really is when I was in the mood to sell them an Epson printer and sure enough it worked pretty well this is just printed the paper ha or the ink hasn't really set yet and um, there's it's now just starting to bleed that's pretty cool now I want to see one more thing um, if I turn this off will it retract probably not Yeah, that's kind of shameful. You would expect that to be motorized. I would. But there's a shaft that it's attached to, but that's just weak, man. <laughs> that's just really weak. Right. Hmm. Apparently all that shaft does is provide resistance. Hmm. Well, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I am going to, uh... I am going to print out a photo and see how that looks. So I've selected a photo to print. Here it is. And we're going to go ahead and print it. Um, I'm using it on... Let's see, glossy paper. Photo on glossy paper. Photo on photo paper. Eh. Uh, that's confusing. I say that because is it like magazine paper or is it photo paper? 
We'll do glossy paper. I think that should do it. Here we go. And uh, photo on photo paper. There we go. See how this comes out. Or doesn't. I know the tray isn't motorized. That's really just a ruse. That would be too convenient. Okay, I found one problem. This is HP paper, and it's possible that Epson ink is incompatible with this particular paper, because you can see where it actually, the paper has actually rejected the ink. I'll zoom in on that pretty closely. You can also see as a result of that where the, um, the traction wheels, Epson has these little forked wheels that keep the paper in line has actually drawn through the paper <laughs> smeared the ink um, now whether that's because I used the wrong setting or there's simply a compatibility issue between this type of paper and Epson ink I don't know the answer yet but it kind of gave it a nice 3d effect like an oil painting um, but that's not really the effect I was looking for but otherwise, it printed beautifully. This looks really nice. Um, paper doesn't appear to smear, or the ink doesn't smear like HP ink does. Um, but this is probably still wet, and it is. That'll have to dry. Um, otherwise, it looks okay. I did take this picture with an older camera, so... Um, we're not really expecting anything spectacular. So let's zoom in on the original image and see. Um, I'll just uh, use my gestures here. We're going to zoom in and we're going to see up close what this picture actually looks like and compare it. So it's still you can still see the effect of uh, the, paint, the, the ink not really adhering to the paper well. But we're going to look at this. And it's as good as it gets. But, yeah, I mean, it really did capture the essence of the original photograph. It looks better on paper than it does on screen. And uh, it came up pretty decent. Almost as good or better than my HP, which is better. I'm just going to hang that one up at work. That's not going to get framed or anything. So I just wanted to test it. Now, we'll put this tray away. Close the front door. Freaking absent. <laughs> what were they thinking? Um, anyway, let's take a look at the ink levels. So let's, I could do that from the computer or I can do that from here. Um, I believe it was in setup. Oh yeah, there it is. Ink levels. They haven't even been dented. So that's cool. Um, good, good stuff. All right. It also prints directly to CDs. Uh, this comes out, and you can actually pop a disc in there, and it gets sent through the printer. Between, I think it actually goes through this slot here, and um, I'll prove that statement right now. Pop this out. Yeah, it goes right here, and. Um, you can actually print directly to a disc. It's a feature that I've never used, nor have I ever planned to, but it's there if I need to. I'm going to shut her down, and I'm going to have to get some good photo paper because obviously that ain't working out so well. Every uh, printer manufacturer um, offers their own custom-coded papers, 
and uh, that's why because they design their inks and their papers to work together yes it's true um, unless you buy a universal paper which doesn't have any special coatings on it and it's designed to work with any ink of any type so there we go the Epson XP 600 as one quick final note I commend Epson for using a standard radio power cord for this printer and not a power brick indicating that they've installed the power supply on the inside of the printer. HP, on the other hand, has a long-standing history of packaging their printers with these cheap external power supply bricks that cannot be used for anything else. <laughs> They're pretty much trash. Actually, not really. This one puts out um, yeah, 32 volts. Wow. <laughs> 32 volts. And uh, it uses a funky plug that could be replaced with a different plug, but seriously, what else uses 32 volts DC? 1.5 amps. Jesus. Anyway.